Hello. For this month's in-service, we will be discussing abuse, neglect, and exploitation. This in-service is required by the state of Texas for all attendants once per year. Abuse, neglect, and exploitation are some of the worst experiences an older adult might go through in their life. It is estimated that one in four vulnerable elders are at risk for abuse, with estimated occurrences of abuse in one out of every three nursing homes. Abuse is the willful infliction of injury, unreasonable confinement, intimidation, or punishment with resulting physical harm, pain, or mental anguish. Abuse can be mental, physical, sexual, or verbal. The client has the right to be free from verbal, sexual, physical, and mental abuse, corporal punishment, and involuntary seclusion by a caretaker, family member, or other individual who has an ongoing relationship with the client. Physical abuse is the use of physical force that may result in bodily injury, physical pain, or impairment. Physical abuse may include, but is not limited to, acts of violence such as striking with or without an object, hitting, beating, pushing, shoving, shaking, slapping, kicking, punching, and burning. In addition, inappropriate use of drugs and physical restraints, force feeding, and physical punishment of any kind are examples of physical abuse. Some signs to look for include bruises, black eyes, welts, open wounds, cuts, punctures, sprains, dislocations, internal injuries, broken eyeglasses or frames, physical signs of being subjected to punishment, signs of being restrained, underutilization of prescribed drugs. Um, the individual may also report being hit, slapped, kicked, or mistreated. The World Health Organization calls elder abuse a single or repeated act or lack of appropriate action occurring within any relationship where there is an expectation of trust which causes harm or distress to an older person. Emotional or psychological abuse is the infliction of anguish, pain, or distress through verbal or nonverbal acts. Emotional and psychological abuse includes, but is not limited to, verbal assaults, insults, threats, intimidation, humiliation, and harassment. In addition, treating an older adult like an infant, isolating the individual, giving the individual the silent treatment, and enforced social isolation. Signs to look for emotional or psychological abuse include an individual's sudden change in behavior, the caregiver's refusal to allow visitors to see the individual alone, and the individual is fearful of the caregiver, or the individual seems agitated. Here we will be talking about neglect, which is the refusal or failure to provide goods or services, including medical services, that are necessary to avoid physical or emotional harm, pain, or mental illness. Neglect typically means the refusal or failure of those responsible to provide an elderly person with such life necessities as food, water, clothing, shelter, personal hygiene, medicine, comfort, personal safety, and other essentials. Signs of neglect include, but are not limited to, dehydration, malnutrition, untreated bed sores, and poor hygiene, unattended or untreated health problems, unsanitary conditions, and um, the individual may report being neglected. Exploitation is the illegal or improper use of an elder's funds, property, or assets. Examples include, but are not limited to, cashing an elderly person's check without their authorization or permission, forging an older person's signature, misusing or stealing an older person's money or possessions, coercing or deceiving an older person into signing any document, such as contracts or wills, and the improper use of conservatorship, guardianship, and power of attorney. Signs to look for exploitation are abrupt changes in a will or other financial documents, unexplained disappearance of funds or valuable possessions, 
discovery of an individual's signature being forged for financial transactions or for the titles of his or her possessions. And the individual will report um, any financial exploitation. Physical and mental abuse exist in many different forms. If you believe you or someone you know is suffering physical or mental abuse and in immediate danger, please call 911 or your local law enforcement agency. If you believe that your client is being abused, neglected, or exploited, you must call your supervisor as soon as possible to report the allegation. Contact Adult Protective Services through their online portal or by calling the number on the screen. If you believe that the individual is in immediate danger, call 911 as soon as possible. It is of the utmost importance to report abuse, neglect, and exploitation as soon as it is happening. If you have any questions or concerns on the reporting procedure, please contact your supervisor. In the next section, we will be discussing the rights of the elderly. Older people face very specific threats to their rights in relation to age discrimination. For example, in access to health care and employment and property and inheritance rights, and access to information and education and in humanitarian responses. Older people also face particular forms of violence and abuse. The first right we're going to discuss is the right to be free to exercise civil rights under the law. The elderly have the same civil rights as other adults under U.S. and Texas laws, except for lawfully restricted. They also have the right to use those civil rights free of interference, coercion, discrimination, and reprisal. The next is the right to dignity and respect. An elderly person has the right to be treated with dignity and respect without regard to race, religion, nationality, sex, age, disability, marital status, or source of payment. This means the elderly person has the right to make his or her own choices about personal affairs, care, benefits, and services, and the elderly person has the right to be free from abuse, neglect, and exploitation. The next right is the right to be free from physical and mental abuse. The elderly have the right to be free of both physical and mental abuse. Physical abuse includes corporal punishment as well as physical or chemical restraints used to discipline a person or used for the convenience of a person providing services. Next up is the right to designate a guardian or representative. If protection for an elderly person is required, he or she has the right to designate a guardian or representative to ensure quality care over his or her affairs. The right to communicate and complain regarding treatment, care, or services. An elderly person may not be prohibited from communicating in his or her native language with others or employees for the purpose of acquiring or providing any type of treatment, care, or services. In addition, he or she may complain about care or treatment both anonymously or through a designated person. The service provider shall promptly respond to resolve the complaint and may not discriminate or punish the elderly person who makes a complaint. The right to access and confidentiality of records. These records are confidential and may not be released without permission, except to another person providing services at the time the elderly individual is transferred or if required by another law. Right to information and choice regarding medical conditions and care. Elderly individuals have the right to understand and participate in their treatment plans by being fully informed by their service provider in understandable language of his or her total medical condition and any significant changes. Choosing and retaining a personal physician and being fully informed in advance about treatment or care that may affect his or her well-being. Participating in an individual plan of care that describes the person's medical, nursing, and psychological needs and how the needs will be met and refusing medical treatment after the service provider advises of the possible consequences of refusing and the elderly person acknowledges that he or she clearly understands the consequences of refusing treatment. <laughs>